Hello everyone, welcome to the GOE Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my various videos related to geography, environment and research methodology on my channel, the GOE Ecologist. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing our channel because we are going to cover each and every topic of geography. Now in today's session on regional planning and development, we are going to learn first about the nature of regional planning, the various concepts, approaches and scope of regional planning. So before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do also share the videos with others as well. So now let's discuss the nature and scope of regional planning. Now remember regional planning is core component of geography, especially human geography. So if you're looking into regional planning, the words are region and planning. So before we understand regional planning concept itself, firstly, let's understand the concept of region and then let's understand the concept of planning. Then we can combine the both and then we can understand the nature and scope of regional planning. So first word that you observe here is regionem or regio which basically is coming from Latin origins and which means what? It means a district, portion of a country, territory, a direction, line, boundary line, limit and also the word rigor basically means to direct or to rule. So what do you understand from this? It's basically talking about a particular place which is delineated or created through boundary making and it is very specific to rule right that's where the concept is coming from and if you observe the regional planning basically this subject matter is an interdisciplinary subject remember we are talking about geology geomorphology and all the other topics like geography economy culture medical population behavioral political biogeography and several branches coming together to form this particular interdisciplinary subject called regional geography now why that because remember region itself is a concept related to space and scale so when we say space and scale it must be defined in terms of location area boundaries and also about at what scale are we talking about at local scale meso scale macro scale national level district level so these are the things that we need to look into and if you observe region is basically areas of unique characteristics for that matter so this is one line to remember uniqueness or distinctiveness that is where we observe ways of organizing people geographically so when we want to look into the space suppose we want to look into the world geographically through different unique perspectives so we will be looking into different continents different cultures different people and we'll be demarcating them in particular ways on the basis of certain criteria so if you observe these are the four basic ingredients of making of a region what is it location that is somewhere on the earth surface, the position. Then we observe the area which is defined spatial extent and what else? Boundaries. So boundary becomes very important because then you can create that one region is distinct from the others. So boundary is the separation. It's the delineation that we talk about. So it's very important to create boundaries on the chosen criteria. So these are the two catch words here. Remember boundaries on the basis of a given criteria. And who decides criteria depends upon the scholar or the person or the authority who is making that particular region for some developmental purpose or some other purpose right so purpose driven work is this and distinctiveness is what we are talking about so remember distinctiveness gives us an identity and when we say I am distinct it means what I'm doing I'm separating myself from the others so this distinctiveness is what is the basic unique characteristic of a region right so cultural distinctiveness like language ethnicity race religion then economic activity like agriculture industry so primary secondary tertiary quinary activities then physical conditions like vegetation climate soil so you can take any such criteria which makes distinction which makes one different from the other. That's how we create regions. So for example, if you want to look into this particular flow diagram, where we learn that what is the various type of region, in detail we are going to learn this in a separate lecture where we define the region, various definitions and various types of region. So for now, if you observe homogeneous region, functional region, planning region, these are all different purpose driven regions which have these core components intact. So now remember the next concept after region is the planning concept 
and what do you mean by planning for example you must be going through some examination you must be preparing for some, some examination so what do you do you plan for it you make strategies for it this is future oriented thinking in present right so planning is generally understood as apply or implement some sort of regimentation regulation guided direction of economy and other activities of a country to develop the economy so remember this is in terms of economic perspective of a region but generally planning is involved in everyday life of everyone right so if you observe this particular flow diagram managerial function goal pervasiveness continuous activity intellectual process futuristic decision making all these are the dimensions of a planning so what are we doing planning let's understand according to planning commission of india how they defined it so planning involves acceptance of clearly defined system of objectives remember if objectives are not defined then we cannot plan for the objectives so objectives is which is the most important thing in terms of planning that why do we need to plan something what is our goal in life then further if you observe that it involves formation of strategy for promoting the realization of ends defined so if you want to achieve something that is your end then you need to develop your methods to reach there and how will you develop your methods through reasoning through strategy making through planning process that's where comes this particular thing that planning is essentially an attempt to do what to work out a rational solution now remember this line to work out a rational solution not irrational not irrespective of anything else but inclusive so what we say rational solution to the problems attempts to coordinate that's why it's different from traditional hit and miss methods it's not like let's try this and if it hits it's fine it's not about that planning is about objectivity it's about focus it's about future which is defined in terms of present resources so by which reforms reconstructions are often undertaken so this is planning now when we observe further there are seven constituents of a plan so what are the seven steps remember when we are planning we need these seven steps in geography so problem identification is the first step that what problem are we looking into so accordingly we can define our objectives then we have the objectives then methodology to achieve these objectives so methodology is the way we are going to achieve the objectives right and then determining the priorities on the basis of order or ranking or hierarchy or many other methods and cost benefit analysis that is least cost method if you remember Weber's industrial location theory where would you plan your industry to be right so these kind of things and then finally the implementation of your plan and after implementation is it over no it's not over plan continues so what is the last step continuous monitoring of your project that you have implemented and evaluation appraisal time to time this monitoring gives us a feedback so when the feedback comes again there can be some changes in the future plans that's how it seven steps work in terms of planning so if you observe further region plus planning gives us the concept of regional planning so now what is the nature of regional planning as a subject matter it has both the ingredients the ingredients of regionalization and the ingredients of planning together so regional planning is a specific type of planning based on a regional system for inducing public action aimed at well-being of the society remember we talked about the lectures on social well-being before so it's the efficient placement of land use activities infrastructure settlement growth and remember it's talking about also the scale so when we say urban planning it's talking about a urban area right and the scale of planning varies between rural to urban so when we observe further regional planners do what they do two main things what is it improve the distribution pattern of human activity right because human activity may be concentrated in particular area and may not be available in particular area so distribution is one thing where planners look into because equitable distribution is very important for well being then reduce the disparities between rich and poor regions of the country because remember resources are concentrated in particular areas particular fixed locations so then what will happen the other regions will be deprived so the planners have essential thought that the disparities can be minimized right the gap between rich and poor can be minimized so that's the objective and further if you observe the goals of regional planning are to build the resource base 
for economic opportunity, diversity, economic growth and development, and then balance the economy, environmental improvement, and general welfare and well-being of the society. So, when we look into the concept of regional planning, is it a new concept? No, it's an old concept, right? From the eras of Greeks and Romans to present, we have been looking into various scholars, their concepts. If you have not watched the videos on evolution of geographical thought, you can watch out there that who were the great scholars who talked about various kinds of regionalizations, zonations and several others. So here you observe aerial interrelationships, one area relationship with the other, how they are interacting, how they are cohesive in nature and how to integrate them. These are the basic functions if you observe of regional planning. Further, if you observe, there are seven principles of regional planning. That is the building blocks on which regional planning is based. So what is the first principle? Basically the principle of vertical unity of phenomena. Right? So when we say vertical unity of phenomena, it means in hierarchy, it should be integrated. It means from village to panchayat to district level to state level to national level, there should be a flow vertical. Right? Then if you observe principles of horizontal spatial unity, it's talking about the area defined, right? the expansion. And then further, we are talking about the principle of space-time continuum. It's not saying space-time divergence. It's saying continuity. It means how you can continuity the growth and development from one point to the other in a continuous manner, how you can stretch that. And then further, it is about comprehensive development. It's not just any development, but comprehensible development, which a person can understand and feel that we are actually living happily. Right. And then further is the community development principle where communities are the basic building blocks of the regional entities. Right. So community development is one of the principles. Then you have the sixth principle of equilibrium. And this equilibrium is the balance between what? Social desirability and economic viability. Remember these two words, desirability and viability are the two sides of this particular seesaw and they have to be balanced. What is desirable and what is viable? If you remember economic geography concepts of 3A, available, affordable and accessible, this is where we're talking about the balance. Then further, what is their principle of ecological equilibrium? So not just just social equilibrium but also equilibrium of human beings with nature that is the balance so these are the seven principles on which regional planning is done right and then further if you observe the various approaches so there are about six approaches to regional planning so planners approach a particular region in these six manner. So river basin approach, then you have metropolitan planning approach, town and country planning approach, area development approach, problematic area development approach and economic regionalization approach. These are the six approaches which have come across a long way since the evolution of the subject matter right from the Vidal de la Blache concept of the pays and gender divide to aerial differentiation and to furthermore we have observed in geography in the evolution of geographical thought in perspectives in human geography so this is how evolution has taken place right from the basic natural order river basin approach to the economic approach of the region these are the various approaches so let's look into it one by one so river basin approach why is it important because rivers are lifeline water is lifeline it helps us in so many ways observe here supply of water waste assimilation energy production food attenuation and so many other functions so what happens in this particular planning approach? A major river basin is chosen for a planning area and then this is created in a formal regional plan. All the river basin watershed areas are taken up for the development plans to understand the physical landscape, look into the water resources, population distribution, economic activity and then further plans are made. So for example, if you look into the Himalayan river systems, this is how different river and if you can observe the north to northeast of India and India can be divided into several sub regions on the basis of particular river. So you take a river, you take a tributary, it can be one watershed or the entire drainage basin area. So this is basically what? This is a river basin approach. Then further if you observe there is an approach called metropolitan approach. So remember recently we talked about these things in settlement geography as well. So this is clearly talking about metropolitan region that is urban area and remember urbanization is the growth point growth pole for developmental activities. So considering city as a center, urban planning is done, right? And what about the other one that is town and country planning? It's about connecting the town in efficient manner with the 
countryside with the rural area through various roads and different land use patterns and making master plans of the urban area and making it a proper connect with the outside so these kind of town and country planning is done then further what we observe is the area development approach the area development approach calls for itself it's basically on the basis of distinction of an area so area could be drought prone area flood prone area hill area development tribal area development all such programs if you have observed have been part of india's five year programs during the planning commission isn't it so these are area development programs then what is it the problem area development the word itself to area development is associated to a particular problem for example the economically weaker regions like dandakarane in chatisgarh sonbhadra in uttar pradesh and northeastern states in india have been under this approach this is identifying the problem of human development and then planning for it so this approach is important and what is the next one that is the sixth approach is economic regionalization approach now remember economic growth is concentrated in particular points it's not happening uniformly right so what happens because of this there is a disparity on the basis of economy in society so economic regionalization is also important approach so for example scholars like professor rp mishra professor kv sundram and others have conceptualized this kind of approach in india by categorizing the states based on their objectives and planning where priority is given to multi level planning approach and economic integration so what you observe here is there is a imbalance in rural and urban development areas and to create a balance in terms of economy so economic marginalization is which is the main problem being tackled in this particular approach so what you observe scope for regional planning so what is the scope where is the future where we will be working towards so if you observe the sustainable development goals agenda 2030 these are the 17 goals and it all is catered through this regional planning approach itself look here town planning rural planning environmental planning human resource development and management physical resource planning economic development planning community planning all of them have a role to play in sdgs so if you want to achieve sdgs you need to work towards it so regional planning is one important thing which caters to the developmental activities and looking into all these 17 development goals so thereby what we are looking into is the future of regional planning and regional planning is just not concentrated to geography but it's basically what it's a interdisciplinary science a person from biology as well can help in regional planning a person from anthropology from sociology from geology from geography from every background people can help in regional planning that's the whole point because these sustainable development goals are based on the principles of the inter and intra generational equity and removing disparity between rich and poor interconnections and also looking into the global climate change and making cities and rural areas of the world resilient isn't it so this is the entire framework in which regional planning needs to be understood its nature concept principles approaches and finally the scope has to be understood all right So now when we have learned about the various aspects of the nature of region planning regional planning various concepts principles approaches and scope in the sessions to come we'll be talking more on various other concepts of region its various types and several other topics so stay tuned stay safe don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do also share the videos with others as well